Hello and welcome to the Devil Dog Day Trade community. Previously in this series we went over the topics of trading versus investing, our foundation built on supply and demand, and the markets that we trade. Today we'll be going over trading term index, our supply and demand zones and how to recognize them, how the platform is set up, and the fact that we need a strong set of trading rules in order to be effective and successful. So let's jump right into this. First thing we'll go through is our trading term index. If you look in the description box below, you'll see a link to this on our website. If you would like, follow along there. And it's also available for you to follow along during our, our daily uh, setup sessions as well. It'll make things a little bit more easier for you and uh, better help you understand what we're doing. Our first two terms we've already covered in the previous video of trading, which is buying or selling a security for a short period of time. Investing is buying or selling a security for an extended period of time. The time frames that we'll be using as we go through our, our platform and the charting are listed here. All of them are listed here. However, what we will be focusing on in our sessions is the daily, 240, 60, and 15 minute timeframes. Market. It's an overall combination of securities based on a specific structure. Example, the futures market means all of the futures securities in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME. Forex market means all the foreign currency pairs within the global foreign exchange market. Securities, the specific tradable symbol within an overall market. Example, the E-mini S&P 500 is the futures contract on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange that is related to the S&P 500 index fund. Symbol, the short name given to a tradable security. Example, the E-mini S&P 500 on the CME futures market is called ES. We do have a link in this document to the full list of symbols that we use. You can reference that uh, now or more applicable is during our daily sessions to understand if you don't recognize what a symbol, a short symbol name is, you'll get the full description of it there. Supply and demand. This is the overall foundation for how we trade. We're buying at low prices, selling at high prices. All the securities that we follow uh, use this basic principle and we're looking for those areas of imbalance. Our current price. Where the price is currently being traded at. And you understand this, but two things. Number one, there's nothing else to the right of the current location. And on the right-hand side of every chart, you'll see this um, triangle uh, on top of a rectangle shape that will show you the, act the exact price of, of whatever security we're looking at is at current time. A supply zone. This is an area of imbalance above current price where we are expecting price to change direction and move down. We would sell at a supply zone. Demand zone. This is an area of imbalance below current price where we're expecting price to change direction and move up. We would be buying in a demand zone. A line of support. This is a line on the chart where price has not moved through but doesn't reflect an actual demand zone over here on the left hand side of the chart. We don't trade these, we just use them as ind indications and understanding of current price movement. Line of resistance. The opposite of line of support. This is above current price where price hasn't gone through but when we look left we don't see an actually defined zone here. Trend. This is the direction that price is moving in a trend up. We will see that we are creating higher highs and higher lows. That's how we define a trend up. Trend down is the opposite where we have lower highs and lower lows. White space, an area where price is moving back and forth, 
between either two supply and demand zones or two areas of support and resistance. We typically don't take trades in this area. This it defines the balance between supply and demand, and we're looking for imbalance outside of this area. Consolidation. An area similar to the white space where you have price making smaller and smaller and smaller movements back and forth, where price is eventually going to break this and usually move in a strong movement out of either up or down from here. Again, we don't trade on this. We use this to just understand that the market is setting up for a bigger move to come. Relative Strength Index. This is an indicator, one of the very few that we use. You will always find it on the bottom of, of every chart. And this is an indicator of a divergence, a negative divergence. And that's what we're looking for. So as price moves up, you'll see the price line trending up here. You'll look at RSI and you see price trending down. That would be a negative divergence between price and RSI. That is an indication of an upcoming move. The same thing for price moving down on our RSI chart. You have here in the chart area, price is moving down along this line, and you look down to the bottom of the chart for the RSI indicator, and you'll see the RSI is moving up. Negative divergence here, potentially setting up for a move back up. Bollinger Bands. This is based, is again, one of the very few indicators that we use. It's based on the standard deviation principle. And we know that 95% of all activities happen within two standard deviations. So we see here we have two standard deviations above on the blue line, two standard deviations below on the red line, and just a note here that all activity or most activity happens between these lines. Electronically or ETF break. ETF, electronically traded fund. It's just another way to refer to the ind indices that we will be looking at and trading. That's it for our trading term index. Let's go ahead and take a look at our supply and demand zone so we know what initially we're looking for when we talk about them. As we're looking at our supply and demand zones, we are looking for a very specific formation. We'll show first a supply zone, and then we'll show a demand zone so you get an understanding of what it looks like with the different colored candles. And just as a basic refresher, red candles means price is going down, green candles means price is going up. Candles have two components to them. The body of the candle is the area that is colored either red or green. The wick is the little thin line coming out of the top and or bottom of the candle. So wicks and bodies makes up the full candle. The formations that we're looking for come from a leg candle, which is where the body of the candle has a greater overall length than the wicks. So this is a perfect example here of a good, strong leg candle. Moving down to the next one, we have another leg candle. The body of the candle is longer than the overall length of the wicks. That is an, a requirement for defining these zones. You have to have at least one leg candle coming into this area of imbalance. The next thing we have to have is a base candle. A base candle is the body of the candle is shorter, smaller than the overall length of the wicks. A clear example here, the wicks, if you add them up, would be significantly longer than the body of the candle. There can be between one and five base candles in between the leg candles formation. The last requirement we have is there has to be a leg candle out of the imbalance. So again, here we have a good strong candle, that is, the body is significantly longer than the combined total area of the wicks. So we have a leg in, a base structure, and a leg out. That is the, that is the overall structure that we're looking for to identify these areas of imbalance. And again, for ones that are above current price action, those are called supply zones. The ones that are below current action are called demand zones. And we'll take a look at a couple of different formations of them here so that you can understand that there's different ways to make these structures up. The first is just the exact mirror opposite of the previous one we looked at where we have a leg in. Again, candle is longer than the wick. 
base candle. Wick is significantly longer than the, the body of it. And a leg out where this body of this candle is longer than the combined total of the wicks. And that is con considered a rally base rally. We have an up candle basing up. Rally means up. Drop means down when you hear that terminology as well. A different way to look at this is right below this area where we have a drop base rally formation. Same thing though, we're still looking for this leg candle in. Body is significantly longer than the wicks. In this case we have two basing candles. Wicks are significantly longer than the bodies. And then a strong leg candle out where the body is significantly longer than the wicks. That is the basic formation, that's what we're looking for. When we say supply and demand zones, we're looking for this overall structure of leg, base, leg, in various different formations. Look for a follow-on video for a much deeper dive into this for all of the possible iterations that we can have when it comes to these supply and demand zones. Now that we've talked about our supply and demand zones, let's look at how the platform is set up. And again, this is an introduction to how my platform will be set up as you are watching it. Look for a follow-on session for a much deeper dive into what are some of the pros and cons, you know, uh, best um, ideas and concepts around how platforms are set up and how, the, how they will work for you. And just a, 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 a quick comment on what that video is going to focus on is this view is very subjective, right? There are a couple of key components that you're, you should always have, but for the most part, what is familiar to you, what works for you, will end up being what you should do rather than what someone else is doing, or in this case, what I am doing. So generally speaking, the platform is set up um, in a high time frame to low time frame order. We've already talked a little bit previously about the this area on the far right hand side, which is the list of the symbols that we look at. But when we start looking at this, think of it as bottom right, higher time frame, moving left and up to lower time frames. So we have our monthly chart down here on the right. Next one up is a weekly chart, followed by a daily chart, followed by a 480 minute chart. And then we move down, down left for 240 minute, 180 minute, 120 minute, 60 minute, back up right, 45 minute, 30 minute, 15 minute, and 2 minute. The overall structure of each of these charts, very quickly, is when, when you look at them, a couple of things that you'll note right off the bat, upper left hand corner, ES, this is our symbol. So if you're ever wondering what we're actually on, you can just look upper left hand corner and you can, when you see that, you see that ES, you know that is the S&P 500. If you don't have that cheat sheet with you or you have forgotten, you can look just to the right of it here and you can see that this is the full name, the E-mini S&P 500 contract. Back over here to the left, we also have the time frame, 15 minutes. So each one of those previous time frames that I read off would be labeled in that location. A quick reminder, this is where our RSI indicator is at the very bottom of this chart. It will be at the bottom of every single chart in the same spot. It will be at the bottom of every chart in the same spot for every, every one of them. On the far right hand side here we have the price points. So this just gives you a good indicator of scale. You can see here so between the bottom of the chart of 46.40 to the top of the top of the chart of 4740 is 100 points in the ES. This just gives you a scale and these can you know, shrink and or grow um, just by dragging the mouse to it. Just a couple of other visual points to note here. Uh, these shaded areas here just show overnight trading when the US um, index markets are not open. The lighter gray area is when is overnight trading session typically for the Asian markets and the greenish one identifies when the London markets are open while in the overall over or overnight uh, trading hours. The blank areas here, that's just when the, the U.S. markets are open. It's very helpful for me to reference the exact time frames when some of these activities are happening. Uh, that is it for our chart setup for now. 
Moving on, we'll talk about our training rules. And the primary point of this is just the fact that you must have a strong set of, of rules. Uh, what the rules are makes much less impact than the fact that you follow them. Uh, there will again be another you know, much longer, deeper dive session into uh, how you build rules, what are some of the structures around them, what are some of the rules that I use, the whys that we do that. But just when you hear me talk about, you know, this trade works or this, I'm taking this because of my rules, that's what I'm talking about. And when I say rules, just to be clear, it is an actual documented list, black and white, um, that in some cases early on I actually printed out and put right on my, you know, on my desk next to my keyboard so I could refer to it and follow it very, very explicitly. And that is it uh, for this session. Uh, thank you guys very much for joining us. Thank you for your participation here and for your support. And please remember to subscribe to the channel so you get notified of any additional videos as we put them out. I'm very much looking forward to being with you as we together continue on this journey towards meeting our unique financial goals. Thank you and have a great and safe trading day.